I'm Catherine Myers, Associate Publisher at New Harbinger Publications. It's my honor to introduce Michael A. Singer, best-selling author of The Untethered Soul. And now, The Untethered Soul, a 52-card deck. Michael, thank you so much for being here today to share your wisdom with us in this live talk. Let's get started. Well, thank you, Catherine. It's an honor to be here. An honor to talk to you all. I don't do that that often. So I thought that for our conversation, we get a half hour together. Wish I could be with you all more. And I thought an interesting topic to talk about is what do you really want? We talk about wisdom. People talk about attracting to themselves, the laws of attraction and all those sorts of things. But the question really is, from a spiritual point of view, what do you really want? And religions about what you're supposed to want, and we know how that works, spirituality is not about that. Spirituality is about looking deeply within and seeking truth, clarity. That's what it's about. So this discussion is, has nothing to do with my feeling what you should want or you even feeling guilty or weird about what you do want. The question is, what do you really want? And the way to do that, and I'm going to be very bad in doing this, is to say, here's a piece of paper, not really, but figuratively, and I want you to write down what you want. Just take a little time, don't do it. Take a little time and write down what you want. And if you're like most human beings, probably first on the list is a good relationship, something that makes me feel important, needed, wanted, loved, secure, all that kind of stuff. And so whether you're in a relationship, I'd like it to get better, someone so should behave in different ways, should understand me better, et cetera. Or if you're not in a relationship, how to find my quote soulmate, somebody who just fits perfectly with me and just fulfills the meaning of my life. And uh, if we're really honest, we write down a nice house and a Ferrari or at least some sort of a car and perhaps children and, uh, or perhaps a little time without the children and we make our list. Nobody's judging, just be honest, you put that down. The purpose of this discussion is no matter what you put on that list, unless you're very highly evolved, my experience is it's not really what you want. It's not that it's wrong. It's just not really what you want. And the way I prove that is as follows. Let's say you put down, I want a relationship. I want to meet somebody. I want to have that special relationship. And then I would ask you, what if you walked outside after this conversation and all of a sudden there was this bush in front of you and it started burning like it did to Moses? and talking to you, and its opening sentence was, I am the Lord your God, and I would like to discuss some things with you, and said enough things that it knew about you to where you were pretty freaked out that you're actually talking to an omniscient, omniscient omnipotent being, or at least Bush. And the question that gets asked of you is, what would you like, what do you want? I can grant whatever you want. And having gone through this exercise with me, you feel, God, thank God, Mickey, I'm prepared. This is neat. I thought about it. And you say, I want a relationship. I want to meet somebody. I want to have that, that thing I've looked for my whole life. Or I want a house. Or I want the perfect job. I want a job that makes me, you know, that, that fulfills what I'm looking for. And what this bush, what God tells you at that point is, I can give you that. I have the power to give you that. But there's a caveat which you probably want to hear before I give it to you, which is, I can give you that perfect person. They will be loyal to you. They will stay with you your entire life. But the caveat is that you will be completely unfulfilled. You will feel sad every time you come into their presence. You will not feel any love. You will not feel any joy, happiness, meaning. But they'll be there, and they will dote all over you, and they will just be the most perfect partner that they could possibly be, or give you the job that you thought would be the most amazing thing, but it's hollow for you. You go there and you thought it would turn you on, but it doesn't. And you just loathe going to work and you're just not excited about it. So therein lies the, what do you really want? Because what you're gonna find is if you were given the opportunity to have a relationship with that person I just described, or have the job I just described, but it didn't do squat for you, and it left you hollow inside, you would say, I don't want it. In fact, if it's gonna make me miserable inside, I really don't want it, keep it away from me. 
And so to move quickly, because we don't have a little time here, then I say to you, you lied to me when you said it was what you really wanted. Because it isn't true you wanted a relationship. It isn't true you wanted children. It isn't true you wanted money. It isn't true you wanted to travel around the world. It isn't true that you wanted, et cetera, et cetera. What's true is you wanted to feel good inside. You wanted to feel love. You wanted to feel joy. You wanted to feel inspiration, excitement, meaning. Those are inner things. They're not outer things. You listed the things you listed because you thought they would give you what you really want. And so wisdom, yoga, spirituality, is about going deeper. Buddhists talk about working at the root. So the truth of the matter is, the only thing you need to write, needed to write on a piece of paper when I asked you, what do you really want, is a sense of total well-being. I want to feel love. I want to feel joy. I want to feel inspiration. I want to feel meaning and depth. And you made the mistake of doing it what I call indirectly, by saying, I want something outside that I think will make me feel that inside. So without belaboring the point, to go deep and to really be on a spiritual journey, you don't let yourself do that anymore. Because I'm sure there are plenty of times that you said, oh my God, if only this happened, I'd be fine. And you know that didn't turn out that way. Even if it did for a moment, it didn't stay that way. It's not like there wasn't anything else you ever wanted. And likewise, if something was bothering you, you sat there and said, if only that would go away, I'd be fine. That again is not the truth. So you come down to the point where eventually you'd be totally honest with yourself. It may sound selfish, but you'll see in the end it's not, to where you say, I want to be happy. I want to feel love. I want to feel joy. I want to feel inspired. I want to be turned on inside all the time. So now if that burning bush was sitting out there and you were wise enough that when God said to you, what do you want? And you said that, whoa, you're a winner, right? How can you lose if from the moment you wake up in the morning, you're turned on, you're inspired, you're excited, you can't wait to see what's going to happen for the rest of the day and you embrace it totally. And then at night, you've given everything you have, you put your head down, you fall asleep, you wake up again, I'm back, ready to go. That would be a beautiful life. And that's what you're looking for. You just think you need all these things in order to get that. So now we go to the next step of what do I really want? And the question that gets asked by a person who's deep and wants to go spiritually is, yes, I want to feel okay in the side. That's really what I want. The outside is not what I'm about. It just seems to, in my past, I've had the experience that the outside changes how I feel inside. And that's what a wise person starts to realize, that if certain people walk up to me and they say certain things at just the right time in just the right way, it turns me on. If the same person walks up to me at the wrong time and says the wrong thing in the wrong way, it turns me off. So I now have taken on the task of manipulating, controlling everybody who walks up to me so that they say it right, what I want at that time, and they don't say what I don't want. And it just comes down to, I have this list of what I want and what I don't want. And most human beings, and most means 99.9%, .9 have devoted their entire life to getting what they think they want and avoiding what they, don't, what they think they don't want. And the emphasis on the word think versus it becomes much simpler when you realize what I want is to be okay. I wanna feel love, I wanna feel joy, I wanna feel happiness and inspiration. So now as you look at that, the next question becomes, why don't you? Because your experience is I can only feel those things if the outside comes in through my senses in a certain way. So the depth where you start to get spiritual and you go deeper into this is you ask, why is it like that? Why is it that if I get what I want, it turns me on? And if I don't get what I want, it turns me off. And if I get what I don't want, it definitely turns me off. And if I don't get what I don't want, I feel relieved. We take that for granted. The yogi takes nothing for granted. A spiritual person questions everything. Why is it that the only thing that really turns me on is when the outside world is exactly the way that my inner state decided it wanted it to be. And we could, we could go very deep into this and talk about it a lot, but I want to do it very quickly. You could create any situation. The, the story I always tell that I use is you just read in the newspaper that there was a 1942 penny that was minted in Denver that's worth $6 million. And the rumor is that it's floating around your neighborhood. Well, all of a sudden, when you go into the store and get change, you're looking at your pennies. And you never looked at them before. They never did anything for you. Now you're excited about getting this. In fact, you ask the cashier, I want it all in pennies. 
but it's 90 cents. I'm pennies, all right? Like your whole mindset changed. Your whole relationship to life changed because you got into your mind the thought that I want to find a 1942 Denver Mint penny. And if all of a sudden you are given a penny and you look at it and it says 1942, all this rush of energy and spirit rushes up inside of you, excitement, enthusiasm. And then you see it's got a P for Philadelphia instead of a D. And all this depression and letdown happens inside of you. Don't you realize you're doing that? Prior to you reading that article in the newspaper, there wasn't any penny anybody could give you that would do that to you. You are doing that to yourself. So what you start to realize is that when your mind has a preconceived notion that something will make me happy, you believe that penny would make you happy. So therefore, you're looking for it. You want to get it. So you project it out into the world that I'm going to be okay if I find that penny. I'm going to be okay if I find the right relationship. I'm going to be okay if I find the right job. I'm going to be okay, et cetera, et cetera. By doing that, you set up a condition that said, if the world unfolds that way, I will open to it. I will be receptive. I will, oh, the word is open. We're all spiritual people. We understand the word open. It means my mind will be receptive. My heart will be receptive. And it is because you open that you feel the joy. Objects do not give you joy. That which turned you on turns somebody else off. That which turned you on today turned you off yesterday. All you had to do is hear one more thing and your whole mindset changed. So it is not proper to think that there's something out there that will ring your bell. There is something you decided inside yourself that you will open if it happens. And it is that opening that brings the joy, that brings the love, that brings the light. And that's an absolute truth. It's always that way. Likewise with closing. If you decide, I don't want to see a snake, I don't even want to know there's such a thing as a snake, then your whole life is in big trouble. Because if you see a rope, you think it's a snake and you close down. If on the other hand, you don't have that issue with snakes, you see a rope and it's a rope. And if you happen for a moment to think it's a snake, no big deal. But if your mind has, has decided, I don't like snakes, I don't want to see a snake, you know what it's going to do to you. So it is this conditioning of the mind, we call a mindset, is the conditioning of the mind that makes it so that things turn you on and turn you off. And that's where you get your list of what you want and what you don't want. It is not true that you want those things. What you want is something that will open you so that you can feel the joy that is natural when you're open. And you don't want the things to close you so that you get blocked off from any joy and you get this sense of depression. So you have a choice, even right at that point. And we haven't even gone deep yet. You have a choice. Do you want to spend your life deciding what you want and what you don't want and then chasing it outside? Or do you want to sit there and work inside to realize all I really want is the joy and the love? And if I stay open, I can have those. I don't need outside conditions to keep me open. So I make, it, I make a very important point because in spirituality, it gets mixed up. Spirituality is not about renunciation. There is no renunciation. Renunciation says, I've decided what it is that will make me happy and I'm not going to do it. Well, I, that sounds rather absurd, all right? Spirituality says, it was stupid of me to decide what will make me happy instead of being happy with life, instead of being grateful and turned on by all of the amazing things that are happening in front of me and all the past experiences I got to have. Why don't I just enjoy all that and then come into life filled with love, filled with joy, and give the whole of my being to the moments that are unfolding in front of me. That's what spirituality says. So it's not about renunciation. It's not about things are wrong and things are right. It's about understanding that you did this. You did this with your mind. You set up conditions in which your mind would open and then your heart opens, and conditions in which your mind would close and your heart closes. So spirituality is very, some people say spirituality is not logical and reason, rational. It is so. It's saying to you, why are you doing that? If you want to have a beautiful life spinning around a planet in the middle of nowhere, why don't you just open? It's your heart. It's your mind. It doesn't need conditions to open. It's just you don't know how to do it. It's you become used to, programmed, uh, habitual, that you had a past experience. This, by the way, this is where it comes from. How did you decide? How did your mind decide what it is you want and what you don't want? You did not make those decisions. They were programmed into you by your past experiences, all of them. 
So you had a past experience where something was nice with a certain person, they looked a certain way, they had a certain name, they drove a certain kind of car, whatever it is. And it really was, really was high for you. It was beautiful years and years ago. Now one of those things shows up. You meet somebody with that name. As shallow as that sounds, don't kid yourself. You meet someone with the name of your ex, you close down, <laughs> even though it's not the same person. You meet someone with the name of who you had your first date with in high school, that it was a wonderful relationship, and you open up. And likewise, when you see a car they had a nice experience in, it turns you on. So you are programmed by your past experiences such that if they were good experiences, they tend to open you when something reminds you of them. When they were negative experiences, they tend to close you. And that is where you get your list of what you want. That's why all of our lists are different. Everyone's list is totally different. If someone tells you the list is the same as yours, they're manipulating you because everyone has had different experiences. And based upon those experiences, it left these impressions on your mind and you came up with this list of what I want. So when you make the list of what you want and what you don't want, you're really making a list of your past. That's how you came up with those things. Even colors that you like, anything. They are impressions. Skinner, the psychologist said, man is the sum of his learned experiences. It's not true. It's true that your mind and your heart, are the, your personal heart are the sum of your learned experiences but you are in there noticing this. So I make a big distinction with the F, right? That you are in there and you are noticing that your mind is a sum of your learned experiences. And it is, that's where psychology meets spirituality. Psychology is right. All of the psyche, your thoughts, your patterns, your likes, your dislikes, your problems and, and neuroses, et cetera, are the sum of your learned experiences. But you are in there. You are the consciousness, the awareness of being who notices that what I'm saying is true. So basically, you come to the point where you have to decide, do I want to continue letting my past leave impressions on my mind and my heart such that only certain things will open and close me, and then I will spend my life chasing after, manipulating, controlling, conniving, whatever you want, the world around me so that sometimes it unfolds the way I want? Or do you want to sit there and understand that you're the one who's making these decisions? It's your mind who's setting up the conditions. Why don't you just not do that? And that's where you get deep spirituality. We're already at the deepest point. And sometimes I quote from you all this very, very deep writing called The Third Zen Patriarch. It's the treatise on faith mind. It was, it was it's considered by many as one of the deepest spiritual writings ever written. Its first line is all you need. The great way is not difficult for those who have no preferences. But that is not renunciation. It is not about getting rid of your preferences. It is about realizing that preferences limit your joy to having to match them. And if you don't have all of these likes and dislikes and preferences and conditions and so on, you're going to find out that life is amazing. Even the challenges of life are amazing. What's wrong with challenges? We play sports. We like challenges. Nobody wants to play a team that you beat 700 to one every time you play them. You want to be challenged. You want to be, have to bring out the best of your being. If you can get clean inside, where you're not being run by all these past impressions, we call them some scars in yoga, but all these past impressions, which are telling you, and they are telling you constantly, you can only be happy if this happens, and you can never be happy if it doesn't, and you will never be happy if such and such happens, and then you go out into the world chasing this, as opposed to working inside on yourself to say, I don't need those conditions. Life is amazing. I'm sitting on a planet, spinning in the middle of nowhere, and there's all these events happening. Don't worry, they won't last. You're not going to stay here. But while you're here, do you want to run around and fight with life and people and places and things and even the weather to try to make it be what you think you want? Or do you want to work on yourself to clean up this mess inside so you can be open all the time? That's what spirituality is about. It's not about renunciation. It's, renunciation is too late. You've already decided that you want something, you need it to be happy, but you're not going to do it. Depth, spirituality, is understanding. You don't need anything. You don't need anything. doesn't mean you don't do anything, but you don't need anything. You're whole and complete within yourself. If you open, there is tremendous joy, love, inspiration that wells up inside of you. The moment you open, the moment something happens that you like, watch how fast you feel joy. And if something happens you don't like, watch how fast you close. That is not teaching you about the outside. That's teaching you about the inside. That openness is where it's at. Closeness is not. Openness is what you really want. Because what does opening mean? It's like opening the blinds. 
If you close the blinds in your house, your house is dark. It's like that chapter in The Untethered Soul, take down the walls. If you close the blinds in your house, your house is dark. Now you have to run around with artificial light trying to figure out how to get some light. If you open the blinds, you don't have to do anything. The light is coming in. But you won't open the blinds until you're sure nobody's out there and only the right people are in your house and everything's exactly what you want. You're afraid to open the blinds. You don't feel comfortable. So you either decide to spend your life trying to build artificial light inside, or you decide to work on yourself so you want to leave the blinds open. Yoga, true spirituality, is about taking off the blinds, take them off the windowsill, throw them out, and never ever close them ever again. What is the purpose of closing? It makes you sad, it makes you dark. What is depression? Total darkness, total closeness. You have closed off to the flow of the energy. There is no reason for that. There is no excuse for that. This is your world inside, it's your mind, it's your heart. It is your responsibility to not close it. How dare you think you're gonna meet somebody who will overcome your tendency to close? <laughs> what a job, don't give me that job. You've been in there your whole life building all these impressions that bother you, scare you, and turn you on. And then you say to me as a relationship that it's my responsibility to keep your mind open and your heart open when you're in there closing it all the time. I hope that seems silly and counterproductive. It is your responsibility to keep your mind open. It is your responsibility to keep your heart open. And once you learn to do that, they're your mind and your heart. Once you learn to do that, you will feel joy all the time. And I mean all the time. From the moment you wake up in the morning, you'll be inspired. You'll love to go to work. Even if you went to the same job for 30 years, you don't ever get bored. Why? Because there's energy flowing up inside of you. You will get the most out of your relationships. You will be able to give the most to all moments that are unfolding in front of you. Why? Because now you're a giver instead of a taker. When we come into, the into, into interaction with the moments in front of us, we're looking to see what we can get. We're looking to see how we want them to be. We're speaking to change things. We're dressing certain ways. We're doing all kinds of things to manipulate the moments so that they will be the way we want. And then when they come inside, they'll turn us on. A being who has learned to be open all the time never does that. They don't need to do that because they're already feeling what they want to feel. They're feeling joy. They're feeling love. They're feeling inspiration. So now when the moment unfolds in front of them, they can give to it. They can take this joy and love that they have and they can then shine it upon the moment people place and things are unfolding. So this is spirituality. It is not about, that's why at the moment I'm going to say they're, they're teachers and I, and I love all teachings. It's all fine. People work at whatever level work at. But this whole thing about abundance and attracting to yourself what it is that you want and how to use mantras and spirituality to make sure you have what you want, true spirituality is about not wanting. True spirituality is about being filled with joy from inside and then sharing that outside. It's not about attracting to yourself what you want. Is there a law of attraction? People ask me, is there a law of attraction? Yes, and you better be scared of it. Because if it's true that you attract what your mind is thinking, you better take a look at what your mind is thinking. <laughs> In other words, it's not only when you're sitting there trying to attract something to yourself with affirmation. What about your mind all day when it's complaining and it's yelling at people and it doesn't like stuff? What if you're attracting that way? So you eventually catch on that it is not about getting what you want. It is about learning to find out that what you really want is to stay open and not have conditions on that openness. And then it comes down to how do you do that? Are people capable of doing that? Or is that just reserved for you know, some special beings, Buddha and Christ, that have walked the face of the earth? Everybody is capable of that. How do I know that? If I tell you to pick up 5,000 pounds, you may not be able to do that. In fact, you won't. You won't be able to do that. So I've told you to do something that you've never done, and you're not doing it, so you may not be able to do it. But if you're actually already doing something, you're already doing it, and they tell you not to do it, you're always capable of that, because you're the one who's doing it. So inside, you are the one who's closing your heart. You close it. You are the one who's closing your mind. You do that. They're your thoughts. It's your feelings. They're nobody else's. So you are in there doing these things. So if I tell you the way to stay open is to not close. I don't teach how to stay open. That's more like finding out how to get what you want. I'm interested in you learning to not close. What a difference. If I say to you, I want you to open your heart right now, you wouldn't even know how to start. But if I say to you, somebody says something you don't like, don't close, 
you know where to start, right? Because it's happening inside of you and you see the tendency to do it. All I'm asking you to do is don't do that. I'm telling you that will take you the whole way. Don't worry about opening. Worry about not closing. There are going to be events that unfold in your life that naturally open you. A beautiful sunset, a bird singing. Sometimes you get what your mind wants, all right? You open. Great. Nothing wrong with that. Don't close. How come it only lasts a minute? How can you see a beautiful sunset? You feel like, oh my God, I looked into the face of God. Then you go right back into your mind with all your problems. Why? Why don't you learn to not close? Once you get some openness, start to work with yourself to not close. And this is how to get what you really want. The, te- the deep spiritual teachings are really teaching you how to get what you want. Because what you want is to feel love and joy and happiness all the time. And so if you can get that from within, you then can share it. And again, this is not selfish. What did Christ say? One of his favorite teachings, right? Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that leaveth the mouth of the Father. Only a yogi, a spiritual being, knows what that means. It means you don't live off of what's coming in from outside. Bread is much bigger than just eating. It's all of these circumstances that we need that feed us. All right? You do it by tuning into the energy within every word that leaveth the mouth of the Father. That's where the spiritual energy is coming from. It's coming from the Spirit. So as you're in there working with yourself, you will find out that if you don't close, you have access to that energy all the time. And I mean all the time. No matter what happens to you, no matter what falls you, if people are dishonest with you, if you don't get what you want, if somebody else gets the job you want, if you don't get the raise you want, these are not, these are not terrible things. These are things that make you close. And when you close, you give up the meaning of your life. You give up your joy. You give up your beauty. You give up your love. You fall in love with somebody. That's beautiful. It's wonderful. They do something. They slurp their soup. They leave the cap off the toothpaste. They, whatever it is, they pull the blankets off <laughs> in bed, right? They just do some silly little thing. And I'm telling you, you're going to close. Why would you trade love, which is so precious, for a stupid little thing like your mind not liking some little trait that somebody has. I'm encouraging you to look at it that way and say, I'm ruining my relationship and giving up love by deciding to not like what this person did or deciding to not accept this or accept that. That's why now you're at the core of of spirituality, acceptance, acceptance, surrender. What does it mean? It means I'm not going to let the outside world close me. I have the right to have it beautiful inside. Nobody has the right to take that away from me. This is my world. I live in here. And that becomes your spiritual work. And so I, I've taught many times. I teach you can, my books you can read, the course I do with Sounds Free you can take. It goes into how do you learn not to close? Because that's what matters. Something happens, you will see your heart start to close. You will see your mind start to complain. I always tell people, start with the easy stuff. Somebody's driving 15 miles an hour below the speed limit in front of you. You're in a rush. Watch what you do to yourself. You're not, you're not talking to that driver. They don't hear you. You're not doing anything of any meaning, but you're in there bothering yourself. You're in there closing yourself. I can't believe he's doing that. Look, the sign's right there. Why can't he read this? What's wrong with people? What are you doing? You're making yourself miserable. Stop it. That's where spirituality is. Don't worry about finding what you want. That's too limiting. Learn how to stay open in the face of whatever's happening. If it rains when you don't want it to, if it's too hot, don't let your mind close you. Why would you close about the weather? You don't want any weather? Weather's a nice thing. It's good that it rains. The plants really need it, all right? And you need the plants. Learn to accept, to honor, respect, and appreciate the experiences that are unfolding in front of you. They won't match your past experiences of what you wanted and didn't want. They're not supposed to, and they won't. The question is, are you capable of letting go of this mess you've made inside so that whatever experience unfolding in front of you keeps you open or causes you to open? If somebody's standing in front of you yelling at you and you don't even know who they are, it can be fun. You don't have to freak out. Like, this is neat. I'm standing on the planet Earth and somebody's yelling at me. I dare you to try and be like that. I dare you to work with yourself little by little to where nothing can close you. I like you. I care for you. I love you, right? That's the teaching. Don't close. Don't expect somebody else to protect you so you don't close. Don't expect somebody else to open you after you've closed. This is your inner environment. You are responsible for it. 
learn, practice like you practice the piano, you practice math, you practice tennis, practice not closing. Start with the simple stuff. If you will do that, you will find there is this beautiful river of joy that flows inside of you all the time. Nothing can take it away from you except you. It is only by closing yourself to it, closing your mind and closing your heart that you won't feel it. And eventually you'll realize it is the nectar of life, that inner flow of spirit, that inner flow of shakti, that inner flow of energy is the beauty of life. And if you have that, you can share it with others. You become a blessing on this earth. But if you are willing to keep your personality closing and allow yourself to ruin your life by closing, it's not going to happen. So that's the half hour. I've communicated what I wanted. Work on yourself. Don't expect somebody else to do it. You have the right every day to stay open, every day to work, every moment. It's not meditation. It's every moment and second of your life you work on not closing. And I guarantee you, if you do that, something very beautiful will well up inside of you and it will eventually get so strong that it will pull you into it. And those are the great high states, the great high spiritual states. Very good. Thank you for listening. I always tell people, thank you for being interested in these things because this is how you fix the world. This is how you fix everything is you work with yourself. Thank you. Catherine? Thank you so much, Michael. Your words were so enlightening and we're so grateful to you for joining us today. And thank you all for joining us and for pre-ordering The Untethered Soul, a 52-card deck. Um, keep an eye out. They should be arriving any day in the mail. And we're so excited to share them with you. Take good care. <laughs>